All right, Casey, thank you very much. There's been plenty of controversy in the news about the Louisiana SPCA losing its contract with the city of New Orleans. Uh, a, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of things you've heard. Anna Zarilla is in from the SPCA with her dog, and Mila, who apparently is very nervous about being on TV today. You know, she is just, uh, she's a Jack Russell Terrier, and uh, she's 11 years old, and she's very excited, and she well, just wants to check everything out, out right now. Put it on one of the crew before she goes like nuts here. Uh, Walter, Walter, can you come and take care of Mila? And we'll get to this interview, because poor, poor Mila is Poor Mila, she's, she's ready to go check everything out right here. Maybe Santa can give her a steak in the kitchen. <laughs> All right, let, let's talk about this contract. Uh, uh, right now, you guys have been in negotiations. The negotiations broke off. The, 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 the rumor is it got very heated. It was a very tense negotiation. Was it? Well, I think uh, what people saw at the city council meeting back in October um, has been a pretty good illustration of how these negotiations really have not um, gone very well so far. Um, you know, we're getting to your end, and uh, we've continually communicated to the city that uh, we're able and willing to work with them and provide high quality services, but there are, you know, hard costs to doing those services. And let's go and, over the numbers because sure. we, we've heard 2.5 million ba uh, uh, bandied about. You guys did want 2.5 2, 2 to run it. The mayor offered you 1.5. The city council came up with an extra $200,000, but the, the 2.5 doesn't tell the whole story. Exactly. 2.5. It was inclusive of about $400,000 that we generate on behalf of the city in fines, fees, um, and other services. So the real number we're talking about is about 2.1. 2.1. So it's about a $400,000 difference between what the city offered and what it really cost for us to do it. And we were asked to come in with 100% services for 12 months for 1.7. And our response, you know, to the city was, we just can't do it. We, you know, our budget is so tight already. As you know, we raised so much money already, you know, taking on $400,000 of additional, um, you know, cost is just something our organization just can't absorb. There's nowhere for us to cut that much without impacting the quality of care for the animals or the services to the public. And those were things that we were not willing to compromise and, on. And right now, you guys own all the trucks and uh, mm -hmm. you have all the personnel. So if the city does have some other contractor in mind, this contractor would have to have trucks, personnel, all kinds of things get to, to, to run the same kind of services we expect now. Exactly. And that, you know, has been one of our ongoing concerns um, in the past. You know, certainly there haven't been other agencies that were able and willing. You know, we are certainly hopeful that the city um, has found a good, solid agency that really does have the training, the expertise, and the equipment that's really needed to be able to do this humanely. You know, it takes more than just a building and a truck, you know, to make it all come together and for the animals to be really well cared and for. And then we have heard that, that, uh, that, that the city was accusing you guys of kind of breaching your contract by stopping taking in, yeah. in animals, I think starting today. But, but you're saying that, that, that they stopped paying for the fuel to run your trucks uh, earlier in the month. About 20 days ago, uh, they cut off our fuel. And so we've been actually funding the fuel just through our own private donations. Um, we are providing services through December 31st, so there's no breach of contract in terms of our services. However, as you know, um, in order to hold animals for the appropriate time period, um, we cannot continue to take animals in beyond today. From the city? Well, from, that are strays. And so okay. that, that's, I think, the key distinction here. Uh, bite cases we stopped taking this past Monday. Strays we stopped taking today. We'll still take um, animals turned in by their owners that need to be rehomed. Um, and that's really the best we can do. We're providing care for all the animals that have come into us um, through the end of the month. We're still responding to emergencies. We're investigating cruelty. Um, we're doing all of those other services that are part of our contract. We just can't keep taking in strays when we know their stray period will go beyond our contract period. And so obviously both sides have been playing very, very hard hardball here. Mm -hmm. What happens to the SPCA now? Well, I think, you know, that's been one of the, uh, the interesting and exciting questions on our plates. We're not, uh, at, a, at the core, we're not animal control. We are a nonprofit humane agency. Who happen to do animal control on a private contract. As a service, the right. And so there's so many other services that we've been doing for, for our community. So when you think about disaster preparedness, when you think about spay-neuter, community clinics, humane education, feral cat, uh, trap, neuter, and release, those are all programs that are of the SPCA, not uh, part of the contract. 
Now we've got the opportunity to do those programs and more. We can expand even further right, on quickly, what we're, we're doing. Out of time, but, mm -hmm. but if somebody sees a stray animal, a, a wild animal, something like that, they'd no longer call you? No, they need to call NOPD or the City of New Orleans because after today we're no longer um, able to take them in and provide care for their entire stray period. So really that needs to go through the City of New Orleans. Are you concerned that, that maybe there, 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 that, that there, there is not an agency ready to, to step in to where you are? You know, we have to trust that the city um, has done due diligence and really vetted um, the agencies that they're looking at. Um, but as animal welfare advocates, it's important that all of us in the community ask the city the hard questions about what is this agency's um, background, experience, you know, what criteria are they using, and once they're operational, that all of us really keep a close eye to ensure that these are really humane conditions for the animals and the best services for our community. All right, Anna Cirillo, thank you very much. We'll thank be you. right back with more.